5-2 Girl. Horror Story Animated. Hey, this title just doesn't have that much. It's straight to the point. But with a 5-2 Girl, that's usually how things work. Pretty evil, straight to the point. Hey, you can check out the original video though. The link will be in the description below. But let's go. She's 5-2. Yesterday, a fifth missing person has been filed in Vilsaim. The fifth missing person, Ella, was also a five foot two tall girl. This has proved that speculation that the kidnapper only targets females who are exactly five foot two tall is true. The families of the victims are enduring hellish days as no missing person has been found yet. Damn. The photos shown on the screen now are the missing persons. If you have witnessed them, Please, file a report by calling the number below. There has already been a fifth disappearance in our neighborhood. The kidnapper seems to be the same person. This is because all five victims were girls exactly five foot two tall. The police speculated that the kidnapper was a pervert obsessed with the figure five foot two. Investigations continued on the serial disappearance cases that lasted for several months, but the whereabouts of the missing persons were unknown and there was no one who witnessed a kidnapping taking place. Rather, the village was quiet and peaceful. Kaylee, come home right after school. You must never walk around alone. If you need me, call me anytime and I'll pick you up. My mother, who was watching the news beside me, said with a worried face, Mom, don't worry too much. I'm five foot three tall. Don't say that. You should always be careful. All five missing people were exactly five foot two, as if they were measured with a ruler. Mm -hmm. So don't worry too much, and I'll be careful too. I said calmly to reassure my mother. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that, like, why so specific, and how would I know this about someone? I wonder, is it a teacher? Because who else is able to just measure kids and just know, or the pediatrician? I don't know. Let's let it finish, though. What the hell? You should always be careful. All five missing people were exactly five foot two, as if they were measured with a ruler. So don't worry too much, and I'll be careful too. I said calmly to reassure my mother, but I was scared as well. Two days later, I was walking with my friends on my way home from school, and many police cars and ambulances were parked at the entrance to the village's forest, and people were carrying dead bodies covered with white cloth on stretchers. The bodies of the missing victims were found buried here and there in the forest. The bodies of four people were already decomposed and turned into white bones, and the search team was surprised when they found Ella's body, who disappeared three days ago and had not yet decomposed. This was because the body did not have a single piece of skin left. The police judged that the culprit was likely to be a butcher who professionally trimmed meat based on the elaborately peeled skin off the body. So the butchers living in the village were investigated, but the investigation was at a standstill because no evidence was found. As the investigation intensified, as if the culprit became more cautious, no more victims occurred and several months passed. The incident settled down, but five foot two tall females never went out alone. And there were even families moving to other neighborhoods to protect their daughters. Man, this one is wild, dude. And there were even families moving to other neighborhoods to protect their daughters. A few days later, on my way home from school, after parting with my friends, a woman came out of her yard and greeted me. Hi, do you live here? I'm Luna and I live here. Hello, I'm Kaylee. I live in this town too. Nice to meet you. Kaylee, it's so dangerous these days because of the serial killings. Would it be okay if you wander around alone like this? I'm scared, but I'm five foot three tall, so I just roam around thinking it's going to be okay. But you have to be careful. I have a daughter named Mia, and I'm worried a lot these days. Luna said, pointing her finger at the window on the second floor of her house. She said, That's Mia's room. She's five feet two inches tall, so I don't let her go out at all. In fact, she saw you pass by through her window and begged me to play with you. So I came out to ask you to play with her. I looked at the window on the second floor at which Luna was pointing, and there was a girl standing by the window, looking down at where I was. Does Mia know me? Yeah, it's been a long time since she hasn't gone out, 
So it's her daily routine to look out the window, but I guess she wanted to be friends with you who passes by every day. Would you like to play with Mia today? I've also baked a delicious apple pie. Yes, I'd like to. I followed Luna into the house. Her house had a charming interior with floral wallpaper and pretty props, and there was a wooden table in the middle of the living room. Luna seemed to be working on sewing until now, as on a mint-colored sewing machine, there was a dress that was half-laced. Luna smiled when she saw me looking at the sewing machine and said, I was just making Mia's dress. I make my daughter's dresses on my own. The dress is so pretty. If you become friends with Mia, I'll make yours too. Come on, follow me to the second floor. Luna went to the second Don't floor and it. knocked on Mia's door. Mia, I've brought you a friend. When she opened the door, there was Mia sitting on her bed, shaking her hand without saying a word. Her head bowed as she was shy. I smiled brightly and introduced myself to Mia, who was wearing a bucket hat and a... Am I tripping or are, the, or are those blood splatters on the bed? I think... I don't think I'm overlooking this ish. ...sitting on her bed, shaking her hand without saying a word. Her head bowed as she was shy. I smiled brightly and introduced myself to Mia, who was wearing a bucket hat and a black dress. Hello, Mia. I'm Kaylee. I came by because you wanted to be friends with me. Then Mia answered in a small voice. Hello, Kaylee. Thanks for coming to my room. Then Luna happily looked at us and said, Oh, you two have fun. Mommy will bring you girls apple pie. As Luna went down the stairs, Mia asked me, Kaylee, aren't you afraid of the outer world? I'm scared, but I'm five foot three tall, so I just walk around bravely. Mia, I've heard you're five foot two tall. Since you can't go out alone, I think it would be frustrating. Then Mia put her arm across mine and took me to a large mirror in the room and said, I'm five foot three tall now too. That's why I haven't had clothes that fit me lately. Just as she said, Mia and I standing side by side in front of the mirror were the same height. However, when I looked closely at Mia's face and body, something was strange. She was so grotesque as she had skin sewn here and there like a stuffed toy. I couldn't ask her directly about it because I might hurt Mia's feelings, so I just glanced at her. Yo, this Mia's is Mia's face was wow, as well, dog. with her skin sewn together as if it had been patched up. Only then did I realize that Mia was no ordinary person. Mia looked at our reflection in the mirror and said with a satisfied smile, Kaylee, I like you so much. It's apple pie time. I'll bring mom. Ooh, shit, you gotta play it cool. You like, oh yeah, me too. I love apple pie, girl. We, we gonna be so cool. <laughs> but you gotta try to figure out how to get out that shit. This one is creeping me out for the simple fact that the entire time I was thinking it was gonna be a dude, but turned out to be a woman. But the way she was speaking to her, like, yeah, my daughter wanna come, wanted me to come play with you all. I was like, oh, no. Fuck. Mia looked at our reflection in the mirror and said with a satisfied smile, Kaylee, I like you so much. It's apple pie time. I'll bring mom. Kaylee, don't Mia eat that shit. Mia went downstairs to get the apple pie, and I had a foreboding feeling about Mia's eccentric appearance. So I sneaked around her room while she was away. I was surprised when I opened Mia's closet. Strange leathers were hanging on four hangers, and when I took one of them out and spread it on the floor, it looked as if a human skin had been peeled off. The arms, legs, and torso were cut so that it could be worn like a suit, and a mask with the face and hair of a person's scalp had been peeled off, was also hung in her closet. Ah! What is this? I was startled, and I hurled the unknown leather, thinking I should get out of this creepy house quickly. As I hurried out of Mia's room and went down the stairs, I heard Mia and Luna's voice from downstairs. She's the same height as me! She has a pretty face, so I like her. Hurry up and make me new clothes made out of Kaylee! There weren't any clothes for you to wear because you grew up, but this is good news. Damn. Mommy will make you a pretty one this time as well. I saw the mother and daughter walking upstairs through the cracks of the stairs. Luna had a large plastic bag and a sharp kitchen knife in her hand, and Mia, who was behind her, had cutting scissors in her hand. I was startled and went back into the room and locked the door. After a while, the mother and daughter found that the door was locked and started knocking on the door. Kaylee? Kaylee? Open the door. I brought some apple pie. 
I kept my mouth shut in fear. Then I heard Mia's voice saying, Kaylee, what are you doing? Let's play. Open the door. When I didn't say anything, Luna said to Mia, Mommy will bring the keys. I hurriedly looked around the room and found that the only way to escape was to jump out the window. When I opened the window and looked down, it was too high for me to jump out. Suddenly the door burst open and Mia jumped in Ooh. and pulled me by the waist. As I writhed myself, Luna swung a kitchen knife from behind and I collapsed on the spot. Ah! Seeing me bleeding from a huge back wound and suffering in pain, Mia hollered with a mad expression. What are you doing? You cut my new clothes! Are you crazy? Ah! Mia screamed for a while and sat down sobbing. It's because of you, Mom! You ruined it all! Now I have no more clothes to wear! Look at this! My feet are sticking out because my clothes are too short! Referring to their skin as clothes is crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I thought she was gonna at one point try to help Kaylee get out. Like, yo, you gotta get out of this ish. But nah, the whole time, I'm a little psycho too. I'm hella psycho too. Because of you, Mom! You ruined it all! Now I have no more clothes to wear! Look at this! My feet are sticking out because my clothes are too short! Mia's ankle protruded from under the leather on the sole of her foot. There was another foot, and the red skin with dead skin cells and cracks all over was so disgusting that it could not be considered human skin. Luna said, comforting Mia. Oh, it's all Mommy's fault. I was in a hurry, thinking she'd jump out the window. Sorry, Mia. Now what? There are so many cops that I can't even get new clothes anymore. Then Luna looked down at me, pondering, and then said to Mia, Oh! <gasps> Mia, I've got an idea. Why don't we wait until the wound is healed and then skin her? Mia's face immediately brightened and she grinned. The mother and daughter taped my wrists and ankles and each carried my legs and torso and went down to the basement. Lights in the basement, I saw a neatly organized cutting room with bright white lights. On the large work table, a belt was installed to bind limbs and surgical tools and cutting supplies were placed on the table. They laid me down on the work table brought antiseptic and bandages, and started treating my wound. That's how I was locked in the cutting room until the wound healed and their treatment to obtain my leather began. The mother and daughter brought soup, bread, and water and fed me, applied medicine to the wounds frequently, and tied my limbs to the work table during the rest of the time. Look at this, Kaylee. You've become so famous. The devil, like Mia, would often show me news by holding her tablet PC in front of my eyes. On the news with an exasperated voice, the anchorman was saying that a six missing person had occurred, along with my picture, which was followed by my mother crying out for help to find me. When I saw my mother on the news, I burst into tears and begged Mia to get me out of here, but there was no use. As time passed, scabs formed on the deep wounds and new flesh began to come out. The fact that the new flesh was coming out meant that my death was not far away. Mia looked at my wound on my back and smiled broadly. Mom, the scab is about to fall off. The new skin is coming out. I think I can make new clothes now. Yes, that's true. I guess I have to start cutting. Mia, could you take off your clothes and lie down? Mia took off her black dress and then started taking off her suit made of human leather as well. Then the cracked red skin she had hidden under the suit, the shape of her eyes, nose, and mouth, which were unrecognizable, were revealed. Then Mia lied on top of me, and Luna what took her measuring the... tape and began taking her measurements. I shouted for my life while being crushed by Mia, but they seemed to think of me as nothing more than leather for tailor-made clothes. Then I heard the doorbell outside. Luna tilted her head in bewilderment and said to Mia, There's no one who'd come home. Just keep an eye on Kaylee so she doesn't scream. She hurried out to the front door, and Mia whispered as she thrust a sharp cutting shear into my neck. Woo! Kaylee, be quiet or I'll stab you ruthlessly in the neck with this thing. I knew very well that Mia could never hurt my body. Help me! When I cried out, Mia startled, it. clamped my mouth shut, and I bit her fingers as hard as I could. I screamed once more when uh, she collapsed, took a finger, grasping her fingers. Help me! There's someone in the basement! Shortly after, the cutting room door burst open and the police rushed in. Kaylee? Yes, it's me! The police freed me and helped my way out, but Mia, who had fallen on the floor, rushed at the police with cutting scissors and swung at them. She shouted, Don't take my clothes! No, I don't have any clothes I can wear! 
pop her a little spoiled ass. Surprised, the police shot her, and Mia collapsed and died on the spot. Then, Luna, who was being held by the police outside, screamed. Mia! My baby! What did you guys do to my daughter? Leaving behind Luna's outcry, I got out of the hellish house, got into the ambulance, and was able to meet my parents again at the hospital. A long series of murders came to an end when a sixth missing person was dramatically rescued from the... My bad, she said that shit like that, she almost. <laughs> How did the police know where she, she was said, though? <laughs> I said, Dad, she tell the horror stories? No, I like, I like. <laughs> Doggy bone, wow. When a sixth missing person was dramatically rescued from the perpetrator's house. The killer's name is Luna, a middle-aged woman who has worked as a tailor all her life. Uh, it turned out that she lured girls of the same size into her house, murdered them, and skinned them into suits for her daughter, who had a rare skin disease. Yo, before we even jump into an outro, I have to acknowledge top tier storytelling. I was not expecting anything such as, yo, the fact that, I, I can't lie, since I've been diving into this animated horror world, these stories have been untouchable, Un unmatched yo freaking crazy but either way it go though what was tripping me out i was wondering why is it so damn specific why is it five two whatever i was like this dude has a weird fucking fetish whatever but as it play out then she meet the the lady luna whatever i'm like oh and the kid is growing as well so no since i know she's trying to feed this sickness of i gotta make her some clothes whatever the kid if, if has to grow up as well and as she grows she's gonna keep on going and going and going like yo this is freaking wild who the hell thought of a story like that uh either way it go though but uh i know who did let me give a shout out to the damn channel that would definitely be respectable uh wanzi my bad if i said that uh wrong wanzi Ent entertainment my bad <laughs> first time finding the channel but yo i'm about to go ahead and get about here uh definitely check out wanzi channel i'm about to go ahead and like i'm going to sub and turn my bell on and i'm gonna leave a comment because that that story was just bananas, dude. There's no fucking way. But either way it go, though, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your morning, your evening, your night. Also, don't forget to come to the streams. We do be live a lot. I don't have a consistent schedule yet. But go ahead. Sub. It will be in the description. Hit that like button for me. I appreciate you. But I am out.